This is the E3D Revo. It's a hot end with a nozzle that can be removed with no tools in less than a minute. Curious to learn more? Just like 3D printer filament, 3D printer nozzles are consumable and are available in a variety of different sizes that are all suited for different applications. For instance, if you want to print very small parts with a high level of detail, you can use a 0.2mm nozzle, which printed this tiny Benchy and this tiny Pirate. Going in the other direction, a 0.8mm nozzle will let you extrude large amounts of material quickly, which is ideal if you're printing big parts. However, replacing the nozzle requires some tools, and it can be a bit of a daunting process if you've never done it before. This is where the Revo comes in. The E3D Revo is a hot-end assembly that allows you to replace the nozzle with no tools, this tool-free approach to changing nozzles means it's very easy to change sizes of nozzle, or if you're a print farm operator and you're looking to replace a clog nozzle, you can do it easily and quickly with no tools required. If you've ever changed the nozzle on a 3D printer before, you're probably aware that it can be a bit of a delicate process. You need the nozzle to be tight against the heat break, otherwise filaments can ooze out and it can ruin your hot end. The way that the Revo is designed, the heat break is integrated into the nozzle, so all you have to do is screw it in finger tight, and once it's been fully tightened, it's good to go. This can also be done at room temperature, so you also don't have to worry about burning your fingers on a hot nozzle. E3D sent me one of the pre-order Revo units to install on my Prusa, and that's what I'll be doing in this video. The documentation is really great, and I'm going to show you the process of how I installed this nozzle, and I'm going to be following the instruction guide on their site. There might be some minor updates to the guide by the time the Revo is finally released, but this should give you a pretty good idea of the steps required to install this hot end on your printer. From a hardware perspective, installing the Revo on your Prusa is very similar to the current process of changing nozzles or replacing the hot end. In order to install the Revo, you first have to remove the existing hot end. In this case, the Prusa ships with an E3D V6, and it's fairly straightforward to remove, but it does require a partial disassembly of the extruder unit. If you've never done this before, it can be a little bit daunting, but E3D's documentation makes it very easy. The Revo 6 ships with a heat break cooling fan attached, which we don't actually need because the Prusa has one built in, so we can remove this and put it aside for now. It'll be a good spare for later. Replacing the PTFE tube on the Revo 6 is probably the part of the process I imagine most people will struggle with. The PTFE tube needs to have a chamfer on the outer diameter at the bottom and on the inner diameter at the top. This is to allow it to slide all the way into the hot end while also allowing filament to easily slide in. E3D recommends a 10mm gap between the top of the hot end and the cut on the PTFE tube. This can be a bit of a tricky process as you want to make sure you cut the PTFE tube without deforming it. Typically if you cut the PTFE tube with a set of flush cutters or scissors, it will deform the PTFE tube into more of an oval shape, as opposed to a perfectly circular one. So typically you need to build a guide and then cut with an X-Acto knife to get a nice clean edge. Once you've done this, you also need to add a chamfer to the inner diameter at the top to allow filament to easily slide in without getting caught. Using a drill bit followed up with an X-Acto knife to trim away any excess is a great way to get that nice clean chamfer. Once you've made the cut, it's a good idea just to run some filament through it to make sure that there's no obstructions or catches. Given that the Revo 6 is likely to be a popular upgrade for Prusa owners, it might make sense to include a pre-cut piece of PTFE for Prusa printers with the Revo 6. Physically mounting the Revo 6 is really easy. All we have to do is pull out the V6 and then insert the Revo 6. It is a direct fit replacement and it slides right into place. Once the nozzle is in place, it's time to rebuild the extruder, and this is exactly the same steps we took to disassemble it, just in reverse. The whole process took me about an hour and a half, and I don't think it's even a weekend project, I think you could get this done in an evening. It's easy to do, and the instructions are very well written, so if you run into any issues, you should be able to figure out what's gone wrong by checking the documentation. The last step is tightening up the part cooling fan, and once that's been installed, the extruder has been completely rebuilt, and now it's time to focus on the wiring. This step is easy, but you'll want to be careful, because you're going to be cutting some zip ties and you want to make sure you don't nick any wires while you're doing that. The first step of the wiring process is removing the original V6, and this is pretty straightforward. All we have to do is remove the original wiring harness from the cable shroud. Once the heater and thermistor wires have been removed, you'll unplug them from the board, and you'll notice that the heater actually has a terminal block. The first thing we have to do is unscrew the existing wires from this block. This is going to let us screw in the wiring for the new heater. This is pretty easy, just need a tiny screwdriver, and once that's popped open, you can insert the new wires and then tighten them down. 
Make sure you tighten these set screws all the way down to ensure a good fit between the heater block terminal and the heating element wiring. Once the heater block and thermistor have been plugged into the board, we can take any loose wiring and cable it together with a zip tie and close the printer back up. The last step of this process is using a pair of zip ties to tighten up the wiring harness and make sure there's no play or flex between the harness and the extruder module. With the wiring complete, the last step of the process is to run a PID tuning on your 3D printer before you start printing. If you're not familiar with PID tuning, it's essentially the algorithm the printer uses to maintain a constant temperature. This is an automated process in the Mark III, so all you have to do is select PID tuning on the menu and wait for it to complete. Because the Z height of the nozzle may have changed during the installation process, it's a good idea to run a first layer calibration. This doesn't take very long and it's a good way to find out if your printer is printing as expected. I completely reset my Z height before running this calibration just to make sure I didn't accidentally damage the bed. So you can see here when it started it was very loose and high off the platform and I gradually decreased the Z height until I reached a good stopping point. Once that was done I ran my first print with the Revo 6. I chose the Benchy model that was built into the Prusa because it's just a good benchmark to determine if the printer is functioning as expected. It came out remarkably clean. The bottom layer was very consistent and the sidewalls looked amazing. Considering that there was no additional calibration aside from the first layer, this is a great looking print, especially from a nozzle that was just installed. That brings us to the question, who is the Revo 6 for? And I'll try and answer that while I show you exactly how long it takes to remove this nozzle. I think the Revo 6 makes a lot of sense if you're a print farm operator who needs to change nozzles quickly. For instance, if you're running a printer and you have a failure, you want to be able to swap out for a new nozzle very fast. In addition, tinkerers who want to try a larger nozzle size are going to enjoy the fact that they can swap out the nozzles for different sizes without any tools. The Revo 6 is currently available as a pre-order and it looks like it'll begin shipping in March. Personally, I'm all in on the Revo 6 ecosystem. I think it makes a ton of sense for swapping nozzles, and I'm absolutely going to be retrofitting a lot of my printers with this style of nozzle. If you want to learn more about the Revo 6, you can find links in the description of this video. As always, thanks for watching, and have fun printing.